what kind of sparked this whole discussion was, yeah, so I read an article uh, a couple weeks back, you know, and it was uh, by Android Police, and it was on the Trump administration looking to ban end-to-end -end encryption. Now, this is not a political debate. And I've always said this show is not, you know, ever meant to go anywhere as far as politics, religion, or anything like that. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up because I think a lot of people kind of have this debate when it comes to technology. You know, um, we're constantly battling trying to secure our devices, protect our privacy, but we all want safety. And yeah, there's this struggle between to figure out, you know, where does line need to be drawn? When it comes to security, it's important to a lot of us because our lives are on this phone. Accounts. I mean, how many of us use our phones for paying for stuff? I just talked about Google Pay and Android Pay. Our credit cards are on our phones. We buy, we sell on phones through Amazon, eBay, and a number of other places. Photos of our houses, our possessions, our family, friends, all there. We track our health, our fitness. We look up health concerns. There is just so much that we do on our, our phones now because they are pretty much miniature computers that we take on the go. We do almost everything. We watch movies. Our lives could pretty much be said are on our phones. Easily. And really, we're not wanting that information to get out to anyone. Especially not for it to be broadcast to the world. Or in the hands of some hacker who wanted to take that and leverage that information against us. So for a lot of us, we demand security. As far as privacy... A lot of us want to be left alone. We want our lives to be kept private. You know, not all of us want to be in the spotlight. We're not all looking to be an athlete, an actor, you know, whatever. Some of us just want to be left alone. You know, we want to enjoy our lives, go to work, and enjoy a family, and that's it. You know, we're not trying to see our information sold to some third world country where, you know, they're taking our information and making a buck off of it. Especially when... The companies that are doing that are the ones we trust, are the ones who we're giving our money to. We're spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to. So we demand those companies keep our information private. And then you think about safety. None of us want another 9-11. You know, for those that remember that day, you know, not to be cliche, but it really did change everything, especially for a lot of people. You know, on that day, especially after, many people struggle to be able to turn the TV back on, to go back outside, that long, get on the airplane. It took years and years to get us to the point that we're able to live our life again, where now 9-11 is a trivia question for a number of people. It's a history lesson. But there are a lot of people, their lives would change forever on that day. And sadly, they're, they're, they're struggling to pick up the pieces. and still are, despite it being so long ago. So as we get to a point, you know, with that, we, we, we demand that our government keep us safe. That's pretty much what people say we're paying our taxes for. We want to be kept safe. But this is where we get into this crossroad. You know, um, as far as government, well, if we want to be honest, you know, we're not, government is big, and because it's big, it's made up of a number of individuals. And there are some, a lot of people, I believe, that are in the government that are trying to make our lives better, that do concern or do have concern for their constituents and really care about them and really trying to do what they can to make a difference. But if we are, to be honest, there are a number of them out there who are looking out to themselves, and they hide that under looking after you. They say they got this policy that's good for you, when the reality is it's really good for them. And it's really not good for you at all. They could care less about you. It's about who they can make the most money off of. Which, you know, company is going to put the most money in their pocket. Who is going to support their campaign. And they're willing to sell out your freedoms for that. Because they have an agenda for that. Yes, there are people there, and we all know that. They're in office looking after themselves. And because we know that, we're at war trying to figure out 
Where we draw this line between security, privacy, and safety? Because you got to ask the question. Are we going to allow a few people's rights to be violated for the greater good? And if you decide to go down that right and say, yes, that's what we want to do, then whose rights? And how do you determine that? Are you going to decide that based on race, status, creed, religion? Are we going to say anybody that look kind of Middle Eastern, we're going to be okay with discriminating against? Or anyone that look a certain color? Or anyone that don't fit in this class? You know, if you make less than this amount of money, you're okay to be treated indifferent. Are we going to go down that road? And then you got to ask the question, where do we stop? Right? If right now we say, well, okay, we're okay with discriminating against Middle Eastern, or we or someone who looked this way. Where does it stop? Where does it want to continue on until everybody's discriminated against? And that's what some people say, well, you know what? If we allow one person's rights to be violated, then we're pretty much allowing everyone's rights to be violated. So all rights are to be protected. And that is the freedom that comes with being a part of this great nation. There are a lot of people who fight for that. But then we got to be honest. We do realize that there are people who take advantage of those rights and freedoms to do harm to others. And the reality, you know, when you look at that, it's like, how do you explain to a grieving family that we could have prevented that, but we didn't want to? Or I ain't going to say didn't want to, but we chose not to because we felt rights and freedoms were more important than safety. See, these are real-life questions that... We all battle when we look into technology and life. And when you look at things from a different person's angle, you know, can you, especially those who are coming at it from a good place, you can't necessarily say this person wrong for feeling a certain way. If you're someone who lost a family member because some terrorists used technology to cause a massive, you know, attack and it could have been prevented if, you know, we allowed the government to act on the lead. Do you fault them for feeling like, man, you know what? I don't like what we're doing with the security thing. Or for those of us who feel like, well, as much as we understand how you feel about allowing our securities to be dropped for government, but we don't trust the government because you have so many people in politics and government who are not really not concerned about us or who have used their political power to do ill will to people. You know, and for people like that, can you really blame them? Or how about the people that say, you know, I did nothing wrong. You know, I get up every day. I go to work. I pay my bills. I take care of my family. I go to church for those that go to church or I just be a part of my club. Whatever I do, I'm an American citizen and I don't do anything to anyone. So why should my rights be violated? Why should my uh, privacy be violated? I didn't do anything to deserve it. This is supposed to be the freedom that I've earned. That is a right of being an American citizen. Then why should I have to give those up? Because one person over there decided to do wrong or decided to do harm to people. Especially when you look at now that we don't trust government, businesses, and people. You know, like I said, I told, talked to you while. Some people don't feel comfortable about government, but you look at the businesses, you know, who, again, who own your information and are doing things with it that they shouldn't be. They have information on their servers about you, and they're taking that information and purposely selling it to third party companies because they can make an extra buck. And when you have that going on, you have a lot of people that are caught in the middle, and they say, look, I understand that, yeah, we got to deal with the thing with security, I mean, with safety, and we got to deal with terrorism, but I didn't do anything wrong, and I'm not giving up my rights, period. I'm not giving up my rights to the government. I'm not letting the business look into my information. I'm not giving up my privacy, and I know you may think it's selfish, but I didn't do anything to deserve, you know, my rights being violated. And right now with companies out there taking my credit and my information and selling it, I don't think my life should be turned upside down because we're worried about one terrorist. We're worried about one person doing something wrong. 
And really, would this person have that mindset? You can't blame them because honestly, I have that mindset. I'm not wanting to give up my my rights and freedoms because of one person. But at the same time, I do understand that there are people out there trying to do something about continue to make sure we never have another 9-11 ever again. And it requires a lot of hard work to do so. But here's the big deal and the big problem that's going to continue to be the reason why we would never get to solve, I don't think, is because we continue to have a mistrust for government and businesses to do the right thing. And as long as you continue to have that, we're going to always have this issue with how do we solve or provide the correct solution to being able to have privacy, security, and being safe. And that actually brings up the point, is that something that we ever would be able to have? As long as we continue to have mistrust for people in government, will we ever be able to find a perfect bridge between all three of them without taking away from one of them? Because in order to have true safety, some may argue, well, you may have to give up privacy and security. Or in order to have privacy and security, you may have to give up some safety. And as long as that's the case, and that is something we got to balance and we have to struggle with, that is something a lot of people will wrestle with, especially, like I said, if you're someone who have been affected by a tragedy. You know, you may lean totally different than someone who hasn't. And I'm curious for you out there who also struggle with this. What are your thoughts on that? What do you feel about privacy, safety, and security? What rights? Should we be required to give up some rights? Or should we just trust that people in general are good and we will eventually weed out those that are bad? 